In this video, we're going to take a look at the basics of sending Morse code or CW using a straight key like this, as well as a dual lever paddle along with an electronic keyer. And we'll also talk a little bit about iambic keying. Now before looking at the keying methods, let's take a look at the basic timing of Morse code. Morse code characters are made up of combinations or patterns of dits and da's. And the basic timing relationship is that the da is three times longer than the dit. So if the dit is, say, one unit long in time, the da is three units long. The space between the elements within a character is one unit. So here for the letter A, I've got a dit, a space, and a da. That space is the same duration in time as the dit. The space between characters within a word is three units, or the same as a da. So in this case, we have an A and an L. The space between the A and the L is equal to the duration of a da. And then finally, the space between words is seven units. So basically seven of these uh, dit spaces, or dit durations, is the duration of the space between words. Now some CW operators will take some liberty with these timings. And that's okay, as long as you're consistent about it, especially consistent between the spacing of the elements within a given character. Because even if you may put a little more space between characters or a little more space between words, as long as the character uh, element spacing is consistent, then it should be easy to copy. In fact, that's a very common CW training method called Farnsworth, where the elements within a character are sent at a faster speed than one might be comfortable with. But that gets you used to listening to the pattern of the characters and learning them and training your brain for them. Uh, and then you can gradually start moving the characters closer and closer together in time until you get to this spacing. So let's take a look at uh, how the different keying methods affect this timing. Now the straight key is really nothing more than a fancy, normally open, push-button switch. Uh, so we form the dits and da's of the Morse code characters by simply opening and closing the switch. Therefore, the timing of the dits and the da's and all the spacing involved is completely under the control of your finger. So it does take some practice to get consistent in forming the characters and the spacings to make good, understandable Morse code. A dual lever paddle, like this one from Venture, really is nothing more than two normally open push-button switches. One switch used to form the dits, one switch used to form the da's. Now the paddle itself doesn't form the dits and da's. It's used in conjunction with an electronic keyer. Most often these keyers are built into modern transceivers. The keyer then controls the length of the dits and the da's. And holding down, either of the paddles will repeat that element. Of course it will do this with the proper timing. The speed of the keyer will typically be adjustable either on the front panel or maybe through a menu item to go from very slow to very fast or something in between. Thus characters are formed by essentially pushing the right or left paddles to form the dits and the da's. And you don't have to worry about the spacing because even if you hit the paddles very quickly it will automatically maintain the proper spacing between the dits and the da's. Now many characters have repeating elements like the letter I, or the letter M, the letter S, or even something like the letter L. So what you can do is simply hold down the dit or the da paddle to form those repeating elements within that character. And that's all you really have to know to use a set of paddles and a keyer. But uh, there's one more aspect of using a keyer called iambic keying that can help even further. Iambic keying refers to what happens when you squeeze both paddles at the same time. This can do two different things for you. One thing it can do is to create a continuous string of dits and da's uh, in a row, such as the period character. When squeezing the paddles to create a continuous string of alternating elements, the element you start with depends on which paddle was depressed first. So for example, if I want to send the letter C, which is da di da di, I would squeeze the paddles, but also make sure that I depress the da paddle just slightly before the dit paddle, and then release them just as the last element is completing. This iambic mode is called mode A. Now there is an iambic mode B, not quite as common, 
But what B would do is when you're squeezing the paddles, when you let go of the paddles, it inserts one more of the opposite element uh, just as it completes. But to me, I find the mode A the most natural because I'm only going to send the characters that I'm actually depressing the keys for. Now the final aspect, and to me the most useful aspect of squeeze or iambic keying, is the ability to insert an element within a string of the opposite elements. There are several characters that actually have this. So for example, the letter K, which is da de da, I can do that by slapping back and forth, or I can do that by touching and holding the da key and tapping the dit key. And just you know, a little bit less finger movement, but it also ensures I get the timing right. The letter R is just the opposite. It's to da it. So I can do that by holding down the dit key and tapping the da key. There are other characters that have more elements that this works for as well. The letter F, for example, it's dit dit da dit. So I can do that by doing, or I can simply hold the key. So the letter L, for example, works the same way. I can slap it back and forth, or do it by doing a momentary squeeze. Other characters also work the same way, the letter Q, or the letter Y. To me, once you get used to that, it actually becomes very natural to send these characters. But otherwise, uh, the real advantage of the iambic here is to help you maintain the timing between the dits and the tas, particularly within a given character. You still have to control the spacing between characters and also the spacing between words. But again, for intelligibility, the most important thing is to have a good consistent timing between the dits and the das, the elements within a given character. And that's really what a keyer and maybe a set of paddles can do for you. So I've shown you just two of the basic elements that are used or components that are used for sending Morse code. There are other uh, mechanical keyers, one called a, a bug, for example, that will automatically form repeating dits by a vibrating mechanism within uh, the mechanical keyer itself. It doesn't require an electronic keyer like a set of paddles do. There's also a single lever paddle that can be used with the keyer just like we were doing here, except you won't have the iambic or the squeeze modes with that. So I hope you enjoyed this very brief look at a couple of uh, methods of sending Morse code. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And ring that bell that's just down below the video if you want to be notified whenever I post a new video. So for now, we'll say 7-3 from W2AEW.